In this video, I want to share with you my tip how to avoid one of the big and small mistakes when you do compositing work in Photoshop. And usually it's what happened. I look on other people's work, um, include my own, and find sometimes, oh, this is mistaken. It's make look very sloppy. It's make very look unrealistic. So what I want to do, it is going over my checklist when I create for myself. Then when I work on a any compositing i want to be sure those point is covered it won't be necessarily well going in like a priority list number one mistake number two no it's but i will group them i will create one group that is must to look for those ones those is very sloppy things if you make them pass and they make does not look very realistic or good even and a second list it is more for the higher level so if you think your compositing is good on first and you want to take to like professional more higher level so that secondary list it will help you to create even more realistic bring this on a next level of your compositing so we'll separate on two parts this video and uh, first uh, i want to begin with the using full size uh, model what i mean full size we don't cut in half and the reason is because when we have it full model located on the floor, we have it some details like shadows and other things that need be implemented here. And if we do compositing health body or other things, then we don't need worried about them. So automatically those mistakes you probably won't create it. But to overview all possible mistakes, we will use it full uh, body shot and we'll just see how we can um, compositing this inside and look on some of those mistakes. So number one, what I notice it's happening, it is a shadows and shadows is very important. And uh, to the point, if you don't have the right shadows, object will be definitely look out of place. I think it is a Disney even when they created first um, kind of combine uh, in Mary Poppins when they have an animation character in a live actions, they cannot figure out why characters wasn't look realistic in the scene. They was looking imposed on top and one they found out because they did not cast properly shadows. So after the shadows was added and cast properly, then object was kind of start living inside. So it's tell you even you have it different cell shading versus uh, smooth shading and other things with the shadows, you still kind of composing in you tied person to the scene. So it's the reason why I think the shadows are very important to understand. So in some cases, you know, if we have it, um, for example, ground here, and you can see the person is literally floating on, um, and you know what, let's go just increase a little bit higher so our other foot does not be on edge, but right here it's floating. So we need add shadows. And add shadows, it's very easy to do. You need to create a layer, set this to multiply mode most time, take your brush, sample shadows on the scenery, probably darker one you wanted. And reason why we do multiply in this mode, it's a cast color. So you will cast as a, a colors on the scenery as you do. And I won't go totally in details, uh, how to do I have very nice videos uh, full course of the compositing where in the details and precise we'll look on all those techniques you can use it and those will be available it's available on YouTube you can search for compositing and if you have it Udemy I also have it on Udemy and Skillshare and so on other platforms but overall what's happening right here you notice if I add a little bit shadows it's already a person look like it is in a scenery small things and one thing keep it in mind that is important to understand that we have it general about three type of shadows very short and hard shadows it's very solid shadow like this very close to the foot next we actually have it wider and softer shadows and usually it's just like this casting what object cast this is soft shadow it could be also directional shadow for example lighting right here you can see it's go from different points actually from three points and fourth to the background but in its shot if you have directional shadow then it can make directional but overall it will be hard softer shadows can be directional and most important that many people miss that shadow and it's why cannot figure out why it does not fit inside the scenery you need to have it first it's an interesting or reflective shadow so, so what is happening if we look closer on the shoes he was staying on a white background 
And of course, his shoes is does not reflect any color or anything. So what's happening if this background, for example, was a different color? So for example, let's go have it solid color and we'll just select a red color, maybe like this orange and we'll put overlay on a color. So let's go say if it's what's happening if this is orange, his foot should reflect some of this darkness and color. And you can do the same things by creating brush and look right here we have it model. We'll just add new layer, be sure we clip this layer, switch to multiply, and now you just only paint on the object itself. And you notice how it's become darker and most important, it's have cast this color back on our model. So this way we can also have it like almost back coloring. And now it will look good. So the shadows and also have it keep it rules of three for the shadows. You have it soft, uh, you have it short and hard, soft, wide and reflective. So this is a kind of number one thing with most time it's happening. Okay, let me go ahead and delete some of these elements. And next what I want to look, it's actually people mistaking with perspective. And perspective, what is meaning? You have it your camera on the level you're shooting. So it's not how high and up and down camera uh, against the ground. It's mostly how much camera tilting down or up. So in that angle of the tilting, it's what will affect our horizontal line. So for example, right here, let's, if I create new layer, let's take a brush and we'll go just draw one line. For example, this is horizon and you can see we can move the horizon up and down general with him horizon, probably like it run there. So when you do compositing in another environment, you want to be sure the horizon line it's kind of try to match because if horizon line go up here, you can see his foot won't match. It's kind of look like almost he laying down. So example right here, it's one background and you can see we have it about horizon line around here, which is matching with the original shot and look, he look a little bit more natural inside. However, if we putting, for example, this with the camera tilt down, it definitely does not look like he is belonging in the scenery because mostly he maybe just lay down rest on the ground because the perspective is different. So this is understanding, need to understand important. Another part, it is your perspective or horizon line from the model and the background they need to match. Also, they need match on other objects because otherwise you'll see, find those elements not um, necessarily fit inside your scene. Okay, this next thing, it is actually masking. And masking is one of the hardest parts, I think, in all compositing because good mask give you a lot of flexibility and a lot of things you can integrate it. And let's have it multiple different techniques, how you can do this uh, from magic wand, all the stuff. For me personally, you can look on um, some of my tutorials when I done, but overall for the hard ages, like for example, right here, this suit, um, I will use a pen tool right here on a hard elements. And where's the hair, I will use it or color selection or other things. So it's combined between vector and pixel masking. And you can actually do this both on the same layer. So you don't need it overall. So on one layer in Photoshop, it's allowed you to do a raster mask and a vector mask. And by using two of those, you can actually utilize and achieve quite a bit with this. The why masking is important. It's let us our character blend into environment. For example, right here is our environment. And if a mask was done wrong, you'll see like outline. And look right now with this outline with a bad masking, it's definitely stand out. It's actually almost like outline. It says, hey, look on me. I'm not belong here. So the mask is very important. And I'm just repeating what I said before. It's multiple techniques. Find one you like it, but your goal is a blending in. And as we're speaking about the masking, very important to understand that masking is not necessary 
just cut off this layer for the better blending even on this one where we have the mask you can see sometimes the pixels see how they're going that not necessarily match you want to blend them in and the best way to blend in some of those edges it is by using dodge and burn techniques color overlay or the um, anti-asking on the edge and you can actually do this very easy let me just show you example so right here we control and we'll click on the model to select it next we go to select modify and we're going to uh, contract shrink this let's shrink to about just as example usually two pixels but i'm going with three pixels so we won't go out too much we we'll shrink in and we'll select modify feather and we'll go feather by two okay next as it's selected we'll just need to go and create mask let's look on a mask see what's happening right here this edge we have this smooth anti aliasing so it does help us and right now you can see how it is start blending it's maybe a little bit aggressive because say two pixels mostly work but now we don't have this edge and model uh, kind of integrated a little bit better with this and usually it's happened because how our eyes work or a camera when you photo shoot with a digital or other ones we always have this small light bending on the edges which is great anti asking on the edges and this is just help us to bring this smooth this edge where we mostly have a problem blend inside again this is our other ones the edge blending and as we're going with the edge blending and I notice and I tell before about colors of course our next step which is one of the another bigger mistake people do it is does not match colors of the model to the background or environment for example this is you cannot see right now and I don't know if you can easy or not but color it's use a daylight color on the person so it's look a little bit cold color and our background it's very warm colors the reason is the colors does not matching and the reason for that is um, one in 3d render of course and it was a nighttime when it was supposed to be warm colors and he was supposed to be in a daylight we need to match those colors we need to put it the environment inside to do this you can easy by creating or color overlay selective color sometimes I prefer the curves again we want to be sure this is clip only to the layers we want to affect we'll go switch to color mode with color mode our changes will apply only to the colors and does not apply to luminosity or contrast so we won't change all this contrast effect and inside here we can of course going in modified so we can bring a little bit more warmer color on a person Okay, like right there and you can see right here let's look even closer to his face even this small teeny tiny very fast adjustments before and after you can see now he by color he matching better inside our scenery of course you can have it a light spill or other elements and i will look those ones in second portion when we going with a little bit more advanced things that's how we even bring to next step so okay right here we speak about color and you notice i says it will affect colors not luminosity and that is another step which people make it it is um working with the contrast what does it mean by contrast if we look on our black and white we want to be sure that our background maximum white match maximum white or our model and same with our black color so example let's just uh, um, on the same background what if our and i'm going just to, let's go selective colors it will be easy to do here what if our blacks will be like this in the background and notice what did happen our models definitely step in out of the scenery because our contrast does not match our black level on the background it's much uh, softer it's not as a deep as on the model then we need to match those um, values and I actually have a very good Taurus on YouTube and I will point uh, put a link to the all playlist so you can go over this where I show several ways different ways from those who like go by the numbers deck picker tool and go by adjusting automatically or do other ways 
but overall if you you try to adjust them based on your view how you see it that will help as well so let's go ahead right here we have it uh, selective colors it's just one i don't want to repeat it same selective colors we'll just take curves and for the contrast we're actually working with luminosity so we want to go click on a luminosity select this way will affect only black and white contrast lighting we want to affect any coloring and in this case we can just take those luminosity and adjust we can go on the curve bring some other elements up and down but you can notice right here it is already trying to match our background and of course we can use it picker tools to select special black color and other things and i won't go in depth in this video how to do this however i will put a link to that playlist where i can when i go over how to do with a picker so it'll be more accurate but even you do by your eye it still work very well on this case so overall right here um, we won't go in some other adjustments to make this but this is very important and very um common surprisingly common some of this mistakes that in compositing people do it and it is kind of creating um not realistic look even they tried so it is shadows again we worried about shadows when we have a full all our shadows is casting if you do health you maybe can skip this next perspective horizon line it's very important okay you have some flexibility how you can go up and down but you most time you want to keep it same horizon line when you shot model and when you do background next it was edge instructions or masking so masking is very important to take out of this and after this we we're speaking about color matching and contrast matching or luminosity matching so those is very important steps as a checkbox when we working with the um, compositing so now let's go look on additional one let's look on something that help us improve to bring this to even next step to kind of blend very well so the first what i want to do it is color directions and surprisingly it's one match going kind of first because you can get away with a lot of things with wrong color directions but um in some cases you cannot so in uh what I was meaning by color direction. Let's look on our model here. And you'll notice our model, we can see a reflection on the glasses. It was soft box, but what is happening? I have it one um, box from la, uh, left and right. So we have it, uh, these rim lights going around model. I have it one huge white screen on a background, which is helping isolate it back color. And I have it one up front cut this. So technically you cannot see one big huge light source. And that is done on purpose because when I shoot specifically for the compositing, it's what I wanted. I want people look on this and don't determine where the directional lights coming from. That way I can integrate almost in any scene and I just need to use a dodge and burn tool to add the shadows or add highlights in some place where I want it. So it's much easier to control that way. And this is a little bit trick when you're shooting for a compositing. So just be sure you have it even light from everything. Another thing is keep in mind, we can easy add shadows and much harder to add highlights. So when you set your lighting, you can a little bit make flat shooting with the lighting instead make a very dark and very preset light so you don't lock yourself to just take one direction light and what is uh, this happening for example if we have a model here so i don't need to worry about lights but um let me open this image okay and uh, this is was shot on renaissance with the uh, uh, manhattan nights but point is you can see definitely where the sun coming from this area so if I want to composite here, for example, a different sky. Okay, let's go like example. We'll just drag something that will be obvious out of the scene. Like this with a sun in the middle. Okay, let's go right there. And of course, sometimes it will be a little bit more subtle than this. But for the example, I think that will work. 
Okay, and we'll start um, putting clouds and you can see how the clouds already does not look right. We have it lights on the middle going there. And um, okay, let's go with a three opacity three uh, just to increase. So we have it, but you can see the lights won't match. So you will look on this and you'll say, hey, this is definitely fake sky because it does not match. And sometimes can be subtle, sometimes can be a little bit more dramatic in a way it's done. But again, lighting is very important to watch for. You can get away many times with a um, fantasy, with a, some sci-fi or other things. Maybe you can create different things. But overall, keep it in mind that direction of the light is very important. And if you are shooting model in a studio, it's always a good idea to give it even light. Um, even you have maybe um, art already done, like right here, I have already storyboard done before photo shooting. So I kind of had idea what is happening, but it's still it's a good idea just in case, give it even lighting and work with the lights after in a production so you can do this way. Of course, if you don't have a choice um, on the lighting, you can always just go with a simple neutral light. So for example, right here, I was shooting in uh, England and you can notice I have it almost no shadows. It's a very even um, lighting, very diffuse lighting. So if I need it, I can add very easy shadows from directional. Uh, actually, let me show you very fast what I was meaning by this. So if I have it dodge and burn layer, okay, let's go to soft light. And right here, I'll just go add, for example, shadows heavy to my sides like right there we'll go add highlights on there and uh, this is very rough 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 things to do but uh, that way we can also easy just create lighting going from that point here okay and like this so now we can easy to create this directional lights of course we'll need go add like before we'll need add uh, some shadows that may be casting on a wall. But here's our sunny day. But point is this, you can see how easy we can do this from the flat. So it's much easier to do that way. And um, again, it is to bring um, your art to the next level so it's not necessary but light direction is very important i notice sometimes actually mistakes does happen and uh, people who kind of very advanced in uh, compositing and they did a lot of commercial work i look on this and sometimes i find hey this shadow does not go in the right direction so also pay attention to this because many times you have it one light source and shadows need cast this way but sometimes i saw the light source one way and shadow was going total wrong direction so it does give it away some and even you maybe does not necessarily pay attention to this uh, directly but it will um, give it some subconsciously kind of does not look right this way okay so let's go back and another enhancement it's what I was saying about the color spill and a color spill okay let's go remove this one what's happening if we look around and we'll notice like right here is a blue color, right here is a red color, but we always apply kind of similar coloring almost to all his clothes. So it's easy to do this if you create a new layer. Okay, uh, let's link it and we'll switch to soft light. Okay, this is contrast, but with the coloring. And next, all what we need to do, just create the take lights above and we'll just slightly using soft light because it will cost we're going to put it right there on a the model okay this will allow us to have it coloring so same we can take around and this is will have our color uh, sometimes you can have it image behind maybe a model but usually if you, if i just create this way take a color around and add with a soft light on the edges it will make kind of this model blend a little bit better in the environment because now I use it same coloring 
And notice what I do. I'm just using colors from reflective. So this is part probably will reflect color from this side. This will reflect from sides. Um, for example, for just as different, so we can even add a little bit more bluish. Like maybe it's come from this side right here. Okay, let's go put it on his shirt. For example, if something like blue lights coming from this side, and this is part of you um, be as a creator and red lights maybe, or this blue light maybe coming on his forehead and so on. So we can create all of this. So like right there, there you go, we're casting. And that is by selecting those lights and implementing them. It will help us to blend in a little bit more character. So again, before and after you can see just with soft light, we add those color spill, light, colorful light spills on our and blend into the our environment a little bit more. Um, as we speak with um, about blending model, the another things is very important to understand. And mostly if you do some made painting and other things, it is how does it affecting a perspective? Because with the distance from our object, the what is changing, it is contrast and uh, saturation. So it's meaning a closer object to us, they usually have it a higher contrast and more details and uh, higher saturations. The more far away we're going away, we cannot see some of those details. We start losing this contrast, everything become more neutral gray. And of course, because of that, its saturation is dropping. So this is important to remember when we start to blending. And it's not necessarily will affect in this specific image because the, it's not too far away. But when you start working like on made painting and you try to add mountains on a background or some far away. So keep this in mind to another enhance which uh, pay attention to the haze okay, level how much or contrast levels and saturations. Okay. And of course the details, but it will can work with the blur. Okay, so this one and another thing what I want to say it is grain surprisingly. And it's funny because I was watching some um was in some conference and a person was uh, showing how they do compositing. And uh, one thing they created grain level and they says, well, and I put it grain level because uh, everyone does. And this was kind of fun to me because sometimes we doing stuff without understanding why we are doing those stuff. And it's maybe okay if it's look right. But personally, I prefer to understand why we add, for example, with a grain. A grain what was meaning if we come closer you'll notice on pixelization that background have it one digital noise and the model don't have this digital noise so it's look much smoother and that is what give away and then this specifically maybe not when we zoom out but if we going to work with the closer and we apply some special effects we'll notice the pixelization or this contrast on a pixel or a noise grain is different. And if we're going to use like in a pause, for example, film camera or digital camera now, and we take a picture of this and we're saying, hey, this is real compositing. We want to be sure that our grain is match. The easiest, simplest way to do this is just to create new layer. I'm just fill up with 50% gray for the preview and we'll go to filter noise add noise i mean it's very simple to do and right here the amount of the noise you need it kind of figure out on your own depend on what was originally you unblended about 15 percent will work but i want to be uniform and be sure it's monochromatic let's go click ok and switch to our soft light now let's go closer and you'll notice that um now we have it grain on a person look before how smooth was and after. And in some cases, you maybe say, hey, why we introduce this imperfection? But that imperfection is what will make our blend. So now we have the same digital noise between these two object look. So now you can see how 
they start blending. So we're restoring some of this noise. And again, if it's too strong, you don't need to use it. Remember, you always have an opacity that you can increase, decrease based on this. But overall, this way, digital noise will help you to blend those objects together. And as we're speaking about blending objects together, another steps, and we can go forever, but I think this will be almost last our step here. It will be um, elements that help us bind together. Think about this, it is like uh, you have a cut on your finger and to bind those two pieces of skin together, you put a band-aid. Band-aid help them stick together. So in our case, we have the background, it's one cut, model is different, and we want to band-aid some of them together. And this is what help, on, help us with uh, another um, elements and another elements it can be anything from the fog so for example I like to use haze or fog okay let's go ahead open or it can be noise for example even right here we can create powder okay let's go like percent like right there and you can see if we're going with this even powder okay let me go put it right there and I'm overdoing it definitely but I want just showing you example you can see the color now it's going to um, blend together. It's kind of give it us these elements. Of course, if we're going and select fog, okay, let's go right here. Okay. Uh, the X zero, so let's go ahead with the fog. If we're putting like fog around right there, you can see how it's already help us blend together because now we have an element that across background and our foreground and bind together. It's overlay both of them. So it gives us perspective, perspective that is, it's like a band-aid. Stick those things together. Okay, I think this is almost last one. And of course, I almost forget it is after you're done, what I like to do is apply color overlay over all pictures. We try to match them together. But the best way, of course, to do it is also added color correction through all pictures that will affect every layer and help us to bring this color palette or the color range to this similar effect. So we can do through selective colors um, this way. And you can see I'm doing globally on everything. So let's do just very fast, like right there. Okay, we can do... Um, right there and you, and you can see how it's already because we're using we're using similar color palette on all elements that is help us bring together we can do this way you can do um, using different plugins if you want it for example um, I like to use the filter forge it's third party plugin but they have like 16,000 of I forget how many free filters so filters is free application you kind of need purchase or you can try it and for example, I built Phototone, it's a, which has helped me very fast with one click, just select what palette I wanted and it's applied overlay. But again, let's take a little bit time right now. Okay, but you can see overall it's with luminosity and coloring our elements inside. We uh, don't have it that much. I did not put it shadows in and because usually you can see we don't have it strong shadows. However, if we add even the shadows that this will look very much in our image integrated. I hope this video about uh, some elements that is mostly you kind of need to pay attention when you do and the most common mistake sometimes people does will help you. Uh, I would recommend just go ahead create your checklist on what element to watch out and it's again it's just our shadows perspective masking or edge extracting contrast or luminosity and color matching so those is kind of important for us also in another one's additional what we was looking at is a light direction it's color spill grain haze cross elements and global color toning or or applying over all our elements combining in the end thank you for watching this video and i hope you find this useful 
If you do like it, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and be sure to check this bell to get notifications when new videos is released. And remember, if you are Patreon support, you have access to large collections of the compositing elements, 3D and additional items. It's gigabytes of the assets there for free that you can use it in your commercial works. Thanks again.